and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Hadrico Live. And today, let me tell you something. I'm taking it to the basketball court, but we ain't just taking it to anybody normal, man. We're going with a two-time NBA slam dunk champion. Listen, back in the day, we called him Jay Rich, man. We, we knew what was going on, man. The one, the only, Jason Rich. How you doing this evening, sir? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. Man, listen, man. Thank you so much for taking the time. You got such a great story that we want to get into, but there's so many different folds to it from you as the player, you as the father with your son coming up, who he, he kind of good. I, you know, I, I give him a hard time when I see him because I got to keep him level, but you know, he got a yeah. good name to him. And then I would love to get your opinion on just so many things that are going on in the league, man. But I want to start off with you. You had such an amazing career and from winning games, the slam dunk championships, you played for a couple different franchises. But with having a son who wants to play basketball, how do you use all your experiences and things you went through to guide him and make the right choices? Well, I think I got all the answers to the test. Um, it's almost like a cheat sheet for him. Um, I try to guide him uh, certain things that I didn't do in my career, uh, certain things I need I didn't work on in my career. I try to give it to him, but all at the same time. Uh, when it's all said and done, he got to enjoy it. Uh, I see it so many times where kids are, are treating it like a job already. And mm -hmm. I tell kids all the time, kids that I work with, uh, kids in the past being that ask me questions. Um, at this age right now, you know, your high school years, your middle school years, it's supposed to be fun and memorable. You're supposed to have fun with these these kids and your friends and stuff like that because once you get to college, it is a job. <laughs> it's so, a job. Uh, you you got to understand it's just enjoying it and falling in love with the game. So I think I do a really good job of um, not putting pressure on him, let him grow as a player. Um, I never drilled him. Um, his mom coached him all the way up into the eighth grade. Oh, okay. So uh, that's all her hard work. You know, everybody come up to me and give me credit for you know, the work, what they see on him on the floor. And I always tell them firsthand, that's his mom. You know, his mom coached him. His mom taught him fun fundamentals. Um, that was all on her. Now, for yo, those of you who don't know, if you don't believe him, just go to a Gorman game. You will hear Miss Richardson in the stands. She, don't play. <laughs> she is definitely locked into the game. <laughs> now, as a father, I have some kids of my own. Now, you know, we always want our kids to be great, but we don't never want them. You know, we never want to admit that they can beat us. Now, here's the question. Playing one on one, has he reached that level yet? Can he beat you one on one? Come on now, give us some exclusives now. It, it, you know, it, it, it depends on what type of basketball you're talking about. We go sit around the perimeter and and play. He might can get me, but I'm still a grown man. Okay, <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna take him okay. down to that paint. I'm old school and post him up. He, he's in trouble down there. But if we just sitting on the on the, the wing and we going for threes and all that. He might can get me, but I'm too competitive. So I think I still got a couple more years before he beat me. Listen, I tell you what, you just got to keep keep hope alive and keep fighting, man. Oh, the yeah. young man is steadily <laughs> growing, steadily kind of getting going. So as a father, what has been some of your favorite moments watching him play? What has been some of the moments when you sit back and be like, <laughs> you know, that's my son over there doing that? What are some of your you favorite know, moments? I think it's all the time, man. Every time you step on the floor, because the, the bigger thing is for me is he's such a different player than me. Um, a lot of people come to the games expecting to see me uh, super athletic, jumping out the gym. But he's very skilled. Um, he's a very a high IQ player. Uh, he can shoot the ball. He can dribble. He make great passes. And and for me, uh, the joy I get out of everything watching him play is his his love for the game. Mm. Every time you watch him play, he is he just loves playing the game. He's cheering for his teammates. He's doing whatever it takes to win games. Um, and that's where I know that it's something special because he has a lot of love for the game. Now, a lot of times when you start looking at some of the great players who's played in the league, and you see their son. Their son doesn't always get that fair shake because for for like Michael Jordan, so and that listen, there was nothing that boy was gonna be able to do to reach the <laughs> levels. And now you see some of the stuff that Bronny's going through. How hard is it for a young man to in the league to kind of create their own path when they still have their father's shadow going? How hard is that? It's it's very hard. And um for me, I, I looked at stuff like that with Michael Jordan's son. Um he was a good player, but was he Michael Jordan? No. Um so you know, he got the 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 short end of the stick, in my opinion. So for me, uh, going through the process with my son, I kept him quiet. I never really put up highlight videos. I never put up like he's next and coming. Um, but when he started getting that attention as far as, you know, the little mixtapes and all these highlight things are coming out, I started putting it out there slowly because I think he was ready for that. But um, I didn't want to put the added pressure on him. It's already enough pressure on him already, being that he's my son. Um, you know, people, some people want to see him 
you know, to come to the game, want to see him fail just because he's my son. Some mm-hmm. people want to see how good he is. Some people want to want to see him do good. So for me, it's never pressure. Always let this be his path. Um, I'm just back in the back trying to guide him through it. Now, here's a here's a great question for you. Now, I see you got on your Michigan State gear. I mean, listen, you know, go green, go white. So we know you, you know, we know how you got down back then. Your son getting recruited by just about everybody, man, woman, child, and or beast wants his attention. Now, is there any unfair advantage of pushing at home saying that he needs to play for Michigan State? There is no things coming from me to push him towards Michigan State. Okay. Um, for me, um, I, I might get a lot for this for saying this, but him getting that Michigan State offer was the worst thing for him so far because everybody believes he's going there. Mm. Um, this is his path. Um, I, 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 people say we die, you know, I bleed green. That's me. He don't have to bleed green. So I bleed enough for him, but um, it's his path. He got to go where, you know, right, right situation for him, where a coaching staff is going to develop him to get better, um, feel with the teammates, the campus, because – once he at that school, guess what? You Dad not there with him. You so uh, I know what that feeling is when people want to go to certain situations, and that's totally not me. Uh, it'll be a dream come true, yeah. But when it comes down to him to make a decision, I am not going to be biased. Yeah, I'm very open uh, to what he wants to do because this is his path, and he has to follow his path. You know, not many parents – listen, I'm a, I'm a through and through Miami Hurricane fan. My son, when he was getting recruited for football, you know – he didn't get the love from Miami that I wanted him to, and he got an offer from Stanford. But you know what? As a parent, you have to turn that off and realize, hey, this is what's best for him. Now, right. my, my orange blood don't turn Cardinal red because I'm over here. <laughs> I'm, I'm buying trees to put around the house. So we stand for through and through. So I completely understand that. You know, here's one thing. What is to be the one thing if you had to give him a message? And I'm pretty sure you guys communicate and conversate, but here's one of those things that he ain't in the room, don't get a chance to see. What would be the one thing you would want to say to your son that you may not get a chance to say to him every day? Man, I don't know, man. It's kind of hard. Um, I tell him every day, just enjoy it. Mm. Um, I never shy about that. Enjoy the moment. Um, you know, every time you step on the floor, you got to enjoy it. Uh, and when you enjoy basketball, things just happen naturally. Um, you know, he was worried about it. You know, we didn't have a season his freshman year. Uh, all his, you know, AAU teammates was getting ranked. They was getting attention. And I was like, hey, man, just when that time comes, when y'all have a season, go out there and do what you're supposed to. And he did that. And so he got the attention, everything coming now. So uh, for me, it just enjoyed the moment. You know what? That's always important, man. And he is enjoying the moment. Trip, I see him in the hallways. He's having a good old time, man. He, <laughs> listen, that basketball, him and, and Mobley, they just walk around like they just like there's no better life than what they got going on right now. 